Now, here's the hosts of Top Story, Kelly Class and Jill Keen. Good morning and welcome to Top Story. Seven three six zero three zero zero is always the number to call. I, I wanted to find some music this morning for ice skating. But, yeah. You know, it's, how do you do that? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 oh, that would have been a dun, good one. Yeah. Dun, dun, What's the name dun, of that? The dun. something waltz. I have no idea. Yeah, something waltz. <laughs> Some waltz. Dun, dun. They always play that. They play it in the background as people are wiping out in slow motion on the news. That's you always see right. that. <laughs> That's right. Oh, um, my, my, my. Well, Is it slick out today? If ever there was an excuse to wipe out, it's this morning. Oh, my goodness gracious. Please yeah. be careful out there. Um, we do have, although I'm, I'm sitting here wondering, all these schools are closed and here it is only November 14th. What are we going to do when winter gets here? Well, we're already you, wimping out. But remember last year we sort of got early snowstorms and then we really didn't get much the rest of the winter. Remember? I yeah, mean, all the ski yeah. things opened early. Until, and... until we were ready for spring and then winter hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. <clears throat> well, but, uh, hmm. we do have. Some school closures. And it would probably be easier to announce the schools that are still in session. But you know, we've who been... is that? Is there <laughs> well, one? Yeah, yeah. Who? And, and we've been giving CSI, you know, kind of some some hard times over the past few weeks because of some of the issues they have. But today, I'm like a shout out to CSI. They're holding classes today. Yes, they're not wimping out on this little oh, bit of weather that we're goodness. having here. Holy cow! Well, yes, yeah, CSI is open today, and Doug Mon is here to, to prove it. And Ella Donahue with mm -hmm. CSI will be with us at uh, 820 with a CSI update. That's right. Uh, St. Ed's, St. Edward's is closed. Canyon Side Christian in Jerome is closed. Xavier Charter School is closed. All of these are closed, okay? Filer, Hagerman, Jerome, Jerome Day Treatment, Twin Falls Schools. That's an unusual move. Wiley, you're getting yeah. soft. I'll say, man. Superintendent you're, of the year. You're and now wimping he's out soft. on us here. That's probably why. <laughs> Give the kids another day off. Lighthouse Christian, Wendell Friday programs, Buell, Murtaugh, Best Beginnings Protocol, uh, Canyonside Christian, Twin Falls Christian, and probably more by now, but <clears throat> most schools are closed today. Well, I guess anyway, people are having a hard time. You getting know what? It. Well, do they? Are, is the interstate still closed? Uh, apparently so. Yes. There's like I don't know a bunch of trucks that are piled up at milepost two hundred one at the Casota Road exit. I uh, have a friend who was driving truck through there at the time. He was updating me on what was going on. They are diverting traffic along the frontage road, but he said be careful there because there are parts along the frontage road that are very slick. And in fact, there are trucks that were uh, <clears throat> that were uh, spinning out at one of those intersections. Too, he made it through, but it's kind of a mess. Out Making there right it now. and driving and texting at the same time. No, My goodness, keep your hands it. on he the would, wheel. He would pull when he was stopped. He would keep me updated. Okay, you know, and then, please yeah, be careful out right. there. That's right. He wouldn't do that. Seven three six zero three hundred is the number. Do you have a weather report for us? Good morning. I do. You're throwing my thunder. Yeah, two, the exit 201 is, well, that's where that crash happened. They're still jammed up, you know, blocking both uh, lanes yep. of traffic westbound. So they're running on the frontage road. Like you like you said, it's like a sheet of ice over there. So, But I, I go from Boise to Burley every day, and it's it's flush now, but I guess last night it was a sheet of ice. So just take it easy. Uh, did you, so you, it, made, it, you so. made it through apparently, huh? Yeah, Boise was the worst part, and once you got through Mountain Home, it turned into slush, and it's warming up. Was so, yeah. was Boise bad last night? Yes. What yes, time? It was. Um, well, actually, I started at 2 a.m. That's when I work, and it was nasty. So, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. But uh, I haven't made it up early yet. Two hours behind, but that's okay. I get paid by the hour. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> be, be hey, thanks for the update. There. We appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. All right, okay. we'll see you. <laughs> Well, so there you go. There's the latest update. So <clears throat> the interstate is still closed at Casota Road. Still pretty bad there. And it's it's raining here in our parking lot and everything. I mean, it's just like an ice skating. The ice, it, it, it was. I almost wiped out. I was out there a moment ago throwing that uh, ice Salt? melt around oh. on the parking lot, on the sidewalk, everywhere. Because it's just, whew, I mean, it's funny. 
<laughs> it's a freezing rain. There's no question it's about that. It's a freezing rain. So. Tom had to take me to work because I'm getting my tire sh- my tire rods on. <clears throat> oh, today. you're finally going to get some new tie rods, huh? Yeah, because you know they <clears throat> were not, shot. They're not tire rods. They're tie, whatever they tie are. Rods. Whatever the tie rods yeah. are for my tires. <laughs> so at least I'll feel safe with um, having That's those. Repl- I mean, my car's 13 years old. Give me a break. That's I'm nothing. sure a lot of things are shot. That's nothing. Well, I told you a few more recalls will be brand new. That's right. Well, you know, this spacecraft that oh. traveled 4 billion miles to a, to a comet 300 million miles away and landed on the comet, mm-hmm. that thing is 10 years old. 10 yeah. years old flying through that kind of an environment. So and it 2004. <clears throat> you know... Um, the interesting thing about that is, you know, because you were laughing yesterday about how they hit the hole-in-one, but... Um, it apparently bounced twice. One bounce took it into the air two hours before it landed wow. again. They didn't even know if it was going to land <clears> on the common again, and then landed again, and then the other bounce was six minutes. I mean, crazy. They're afraid yeah. to move the thing because they're worried it's going to... It's lucky it landed on the comet. Can you imagine being up there oh, for two man. hours and then coming down again? And missing it? Ooh. You know, if that, as I've said, with what they've gone through so far... <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, with what they've gone through so far, if that mission ended now, it would be a resounding success. I know that they they have a lot of plans for it, and they don't know if they're going to be able to do that now because the solar panels on the craft are in the shade. I know. And it's only getting about 90 minutes of sunshine every 12 hours. That's not enough to keep the batteries charged. Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck, when you I need them, know. please get there and turn it over so it can get the, yes. <laughs> the get sunshine. That, get the space shuttle up there. And, and charge fix that the batteries. Thing. And so humanity can know what's, b- what's in to, this comet. Don't forget to stop by Sears and pick up a battery <laughs> charger and run up there and get that done. <laughs> Come on. Where are you? Save so the anyway. world. Save the comet. <clears throat> As I said, we have uh, Ella Donahue from uh, CSI with an update here at 820. She made it in okay. Well, that's good. I mean, <clears throat> you know what? You can if you go slowly. It's the ones that don't that fly yeah. by you, and you're like, come on, I've dude. I've got four-wheel drive. I can go anywhere. It I'm bulletproof, by golly. Get out of my way. doesn't stop you when you're sliding. <laughs> so what do you call them? Lugheads? Luggerheads? <clears throat> Lugheads? Coming up at 8.30, we got a couple of comedians here from Canyon Crest Dining and Event Center. They're going to tell, they got dates this weekend at Canyon Crest. Yes. As we do today. One starting at noon. tonight. Yeah. We're going there t- at noon today for our winner's lunch of the, mm-hmm. uh, of the mm-hmm. Canyon Crest Dining and Event Center. Free lunch with Kelly and Jill, Jim Winsveen, and his brother, Frank. Frank. Yeah. I hope that I hope the limo has four wheel drive. <laughs> I don't think it does, Jill. But don't well, worry, I'll be sitting. We'll have it. a That'll lot. Weight it down. We have a lot of weight in the back. <laughs> I will be fine. Actually, we'll put you up on the hood and just let you talk, and the yeah. you know that'll melt ooh, the ice in front ooh, of us. Oh, you're so funny. But at any rate, I know. I'll just fly there on my broom. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, Kelly. that's a good what idea. What a fabulous idea. <laughs> At 9 o'clock, we have Nathan Jerky with the Idaho Transportation Department. How timely is that, huh? Very timely. Nathan, yeah. what up with those roads? Yeah, what did you do this for? How would you prepare? <clears throat> what is going on? I know. Well, I can't even believe he has time to even talk to us, frankly. I know. Well, maybe he doesn't this morning. I, I got a hold of him yesterday, and things were fine. But... He's coming in studio? <clears throat> yep. Oh, yeah. And I think he comes... Well, I don't know. I think he lives. He doesn't live in Shoshone. I don't believe that's where he works. That's where his office is. Maybe he wants to hide. Maybe he wants to hide out here so he doesn't have to get all these calls. He might. I'll yeah, hide the radio come in here, station. Turn his cell phone off. Don't have to worry about it for a whole hour. Yeah. <laughs> so, at any rate, well, we got and some news. And it's also Open Mind Friday. It's Friday. Yeah, yeah. Open Mind Friday. So we got a couple of minutes before the first break, and then we have Ella, and then we'll have the comedians, and then, then we'll we have, have a segment. Then we'll have a segment. I want to talk about this. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it now, but just a little teaser. The here. comet. <laughs> <clears throat> there's no. There's, there's a tenth grade bio, a tenth grade biology teacher in Nampa, who uh, slaughtered and prepared a bunny rabbit in front of his biology class. I thought you were going to tell the whole thing. You just told the whole thing. Well, where's the hook? That's, that's not the whole thing. The class is biology. That's. I know, and he's in trouble. Yeah. That's that's the hook. He is in trouble. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Come on. Yeah, cuz that's well, biology. You know, we're going to we're going to be we'll we're going to we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. I mean, so. it sounds like a class Kelton Hat could teach. Come I know. On. But I don't think it's called biology. But anyway, we digress. We'll talk about this when at 8:40.
Yeah, at 840. Okay. Then, uh, oh, here's something that you might be interested in. Everybody's on their cell phones this morning. You're on your cell phone this morning, right? You're calling work. You're saying, I'm going to be late. You're texting. Guess, <laughs> guess who's listening? Federal law enforcement agents reportedly fly small planes loaded with gear to spy on Americans' cell phone calls. On Thursday, the Wall Street Journal cited unnamed sources who said the planes carry a box that serves as a dummy cell phone site. That device mimics actual towers, duping nearby cell phones and connecting to it instead of a real phone company tower. According to the report, the federal government gathers the data from Cessna airplanes and can cover most of the U.S. population. These devices typically trick phones into sharing its location data and revealing the phone's identity. Yeah, so, but they're not listening to your, your conversations. It's almost like that GPS thing that Kelton talked about. You drive by and you know who lives there or whatever. You know what? Like I said before, if the government wants to listen to my conversations, have fun. If you want to hear about food or recipes, you want to talk about death by chocolate, fine. Maybe you can help me find a few sponsors. That would be great. I would welcome the help. You can be on my committee. I don't care. You can listen to anything I'm saying. I don't care. You can help me out. Please do something. Maybe you know someone. Maybe you know a candy vendor that wants to participate. Feel free. Who cares? On the on the credits for your pamphlet, you can put, uh, uh, you know, the helpers were Jill Scheme, da 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 da, and the entire staff of the NSA. Yeah, that's what I said. My best my best best committee helper was the NSA, who found me my 82 sponsors, my 25 vendors. Thank you and sold the most ticket sales. There you go. Thank See. you. Who cares? I mean, they're collecting data. I have no idea. I don't even know how you could store this all. Who knows? If oh, it's they're storing where? it. Believe me. What? Why? And why? Why do you need road, it? Twenty years down the road, when we are arrested for subversion or something, they're going to go back to our cell phone records from twenty years ago and say, "Hey, this is what this guy or this gal said." Really? Yeah. Let's Come nail them to the wall. They're Please. they're guilty. Throw them in jail. How bored? It's the Minority you be? Report. They are planning to commit a crime a year from now. Let's arrest them now and throw them in jail. Help me with, my, help, help me with death by chocolate, please. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got Ella Donahue okay. next with a CSI update. 7360300 is the number to call. Welcome back. And uh, today is the day that many of you who have a feedlot or dairy operation and don't have a low on honey loader are probably wishing you had one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because they handle all... Just turn all... that bad boy on. That's right. They handle all sorts of manure, anywhere from liquid to frozen and dry. And today there's probably liquid and frozen. You know, you're probably getting a combination of it today. I would say probably yeah. frozen. So to handle that, a lot of the feedlots and dairies in this area have gone to the low on honey loader from Stanley and Company. And what you can do is get one from Pat Hartzell with Stanley and Company, but you might like to see one in operation first. Today would be a good day to do that. Give a hold, get a hold of Pat Hartzell, and he can set you up so you can see one of these that's operating today or tomorrow. And uh, you might decide that this is in your future. Pat Hartzell at 280-1167 with Stanley and Company. Ella Donahue, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ella. Thanks for coming in on this crazy, icy, snowy day. Oh, it's no big deal. See there? A girl <laughs> no after my own deal. heart. No big deal. Whatever. Just a, around here, we call this a Friday. This is a you Friday. Know, come on. Got to earn your weekend. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. There you go. Have you so, earned it yet? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So what's going on at CSI? Well, the women's basketball team's Coca-Cola Classic Tournament is tonight and tomorrow at the CSI gym. They're going to play Nellis Air Force at 7.30 tonight and Sheridan, Wyoming at 7.30 tomorrow. Hmm. Okay. That is assuming that they can get here. That's true. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. Of course, they might already be here. They might be. They're yeah. from Wyoming, man. Yeah. They can get anywhere. This is yeah, Are you kidding? Good. This is shirt another sleeve Friday. weather. This is, this is like, setting, what's a, snow? setting in the shade, drinking a cool one weather what's in snow? Wyoming. It's, Are you kidding It's me? actually the ice that gets you, but whatever. Okay, so what else you got? <laughs> we have the CSI per Percussion Ensemble. They're doing a free fall concert at 730 next Wednesday night in the Fine Arts Christmas-themed or Fine Arts Theater. Is there enough room in, the, in that uh, theater to do a free fall concert? 
Well, they've been doing it for a while, so I'm sure they have probably figured it out where to be. <laughs> okay, I was just wondering, because when you're in your free fall, I mean, that takes a lot of room. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> you know. I digress here. Yeah. It's Friday. He's earning it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so anyway, what? so it's it's free of charge? Yes, it is free of charge. A free fall concert. Free fall concert. Free, I saw that free as fall. free fall concert. I know. You know. I know. Everybody jumps out of a plane and, and then they play playing. their instruments they while they're falling the, through the sky. The stage. Yeah. That would be that would be a sight to see. <laughs> That's the finale. Where's okay. Guinness Book of World Records when you need I it? I don't you know? know. They're following Al Roker. <laughs> All right. So you got two more events next Thursday. Yes. Um, the CSI Stage Door Series as the Boise Film Underground brings two independent films to CSI. The music score will be performed live as you sit on stage with the musicians. Admis- admission is $10 per person across the campus at the Herit Center. You can have uh, that same evening. Chris yeah. Anderson <laughs> will tell you wh- why stars sometimes explode and what happens to them in space when they do. That is in the bi-monthly astronomy talk Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. in the Herit Center, Rick Allen's room. Admission is two fifty per person. That's right, because you want to know why stars explode sometimes, don't you, Cal? Yeah. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Chris is so interesting. Everyone I should. know. He can make anything interesting. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. really can. He can. He can make changing a flat tire interesting. I know. So. Well, that's talent. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He's. He, I wish I had a teacher like him. Anyway. So what else we got? Two big events next weekend, the 45th annual CSI Ski Swap in the Rec Center with oh, all yeah. kinds of used and new uh, winter gear. That's always a big one. Oh, yes. Check your gear in on Thursday afternoon or Friday morning next week, and then the sale goes all day Friday and Saturday. Also, the first ever Holiday Artisan Bazaar put on by the CSI Student Nurses. That'll be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday the 22nd at the Health Science Building on North College Road. All so right. what do you mean? So they're all talented and crafty too, the nurses? Yeah, they got and a lot of talent over there. And it's their artwork? Wow. You know, uh, I hope that a lot of this is regular handmade stuff because a lot of the things that they call themselves craft bazaars, it's like 80% is the stuff from China. Yeah. You know? No, so. I, well, it sounds like the nurses have made the stuff. That's kind of yeah. That and is. the ski swap a few years ago, Tom and I we got we upgraded our ski equipment there, and it was such a bargain. It was all brand new stuff, and yeah. it was great. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great place to. I mean, I'm not into skiing. No, the but last time I tried it, I knocked the mountain down. But you know, <laughs> I mean. Uh, no, but injuries. that is really great, and a lot of people go there. But, you know, honestly, if you have some kids that are starting to ski, you can get some ski boots that are used, and yeah. just at a fraction well, of the price, right. and skis and poles. And or if you just want to try it, and you don't yeah. want to put a bunch of money into it for something you might not like, or you might break your neck the first time out, right. you know, what a waste of money that would be. So That is can, huge. That If, you know, if people like to ski and you want to upgrade your stuff, they have some great stuff there, that's, that's for right. sure. That's right. So, Ella, when are finals? Um, the week of the 17th, because I always have one on my birthday. Wait, November or December? December. December. So when do you get off for Thanksgiving? Do you guys get a whole week off or just we, Thanksgiving? We get off on like, I think they go to school Monday and Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. I don't have classes on Wednesday, so I don't really pay attention to that fact. Oh, so you so get, Wednesday, get Wednesday, Thursday. Off. Do you get Friday off too? Day yes. after Thanksgiving? Yes. Oh, so, so three days. Nice. Bunch of sissies. We ought to work on Friday. After oh. Thanksgiving, Christmas we in the do, nighttime We do, don't sky. we? Well, yes, my uncle, we do. he only gets one day. He gets Thanksgiving, and then he has to go to work the Wednesday before and the Friday after. That's so called he life. Work? He works at the Correctional Center, in, Serena, Center, Serena, I don't know what that was about, Center in Nampa. Oh, well, you know, those he's prisoners, they got to be watched all the they time. They actually well, have a teacher. They have to be fed and stuff, too. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why. Just put a bunch of, give them a bunch of supplies hey, before hey, the holidays. Hey, 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 hey. Like, you know, you got it. You guys are good. That's right. These yeah. are people, we'll, too. We'll see you in a few days. Be nice, people. All right. People. We'll be right back with a bunch of comedians. That's right. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Ella. Appreciate Thanks, it. Ella. See you next time. And we're back. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to announce that we've hired a couple of new people to do weather reports for us and today. And finally, because Kelly's retiring. <laughs> yeah, that's right. we got Rick Dillia and Oscar Ovius. All are, right. Hey, he are, nailed, he got the Yeah, ball. they right. nailed it right out well, of the box. 40 years in radio, this man who's retiring at the end of the year. He can nail anything. There you go. Oh, uh, Wow. Yeah. Oh, As his sidekick, you're pretty uh, liberal with that statement. I am very <laughs> liberal with this statement. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> Actually, he does. I found out he's from Boston. 
Boston. Yeah, yeah we're fellow, uh, oh, fellow God. Bostonians. Yeah, Every time I awesome. turn around, there's some somebody from the east coming out here to reinforce you, Jill. <laughs> yeah. So you know, know, you know, it's amazing. We were talking about it uh, before we came in. Like, it, it, I I don't know if it snows that often here in Idaho, Not but really. where, where we're from in Boston. The only nothing. way there's a school closing is if there's a shooting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, no. right. we don't, Bam! You guys yeah, got like exactly. an inch of snow. Yeah, the roads are a little slick. A little I know. slick, but... Hey, I, I have to tell you, I've lived here for 62 years, and I think we kind of wimped out today. Because well, I have seen worse conditions than this, and they never close the schools. Now, some of the outlying schools where a lot of the kids are rural, they will close them. Uh, Twin Falls schools were like... About eighty percent of the kids live in town. Mm. Uh, they hardly ever close them, but they did today. Man, I don't know. And why. you know, I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, sorry if I'm cutting you out. I, I, no, I'm thrilled <laughs> that some of the schools were canceled because, as a fourth year senior at Twin Falls Christian, <laughs> I uh, I had a big trig exam this afternoon. Did you? And now I get out of it because I didn't even yeah. study last night. Oh. Yeah, right. And that's not the that's not the math exam. That's a, a test about Sarah Palin's kid. Not Whoa! A- oh, <laughs> bam! Huh? bam. Got it. Uh, Not giving an opinion one way or another. No, 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 no. it's just a just because, a information. Yeah, 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 sure. And then the calls start lighting up. Here we <laughs> no, go. <laughs> okay. so, the one thing we have noticed because we've been doing the rounds all morning, and obviously the big topic is all the school closures. But there are a handful of schools out there that are still open for business and no one's right. really reporting on it so rick and i we brought a list of the schools that are still open for business you guys might oh cool no, go ahead. actually i've been sure. looking for exactly that and didn't well, know where to go yeah because you, know? you know what happens a lot of kids go back to bed they're like oh i don't have school today but you're like hey hey, maybe your school did right. not there, close yeah. there's a couple out there like yeah. the, the at the top of our list uh the the first school it's still all these are still open for business we have the uh, hogwarts school of wizardry and science that's oh, still yeah that's cool. yeah yeah that's still open. So, yeah mm-hmm. I was going to mention that, and I forgot. Uh, police academies one, three, and five. Right. <laughs> All right. Not two, four, and six, which is weird. I don't know. Yeah, that's odd. odd. Yeah. That's an interesting one. Uh, it's just odd people that are working right. today and uh, going to school. Rick and I's uh, our uh, actually it's our alma mater is open for business. It's the School of Hard Knocks. Oh, that yeah. never. That never yeah. I graduated from there yeah. in, yeah. in yeah. 1993, yeah. 95, 98, and. <laughs> <laughs> I got an honorary GED. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Uh, the good enough degree. Okay, uh, great. We have uh, Rydell High School uh, still open, and uh, <laughs> believe it or not, still grease is the word That's at true. Rydell High School. And then this is a biggie. I'm actually shocked about this one. Uh, uh, Ridgemont High is actually open still today for All business. Right. However, the roads around in the nearby area are very, very slick, so be very careful. So. I mean, I guess you could say right now it's slow times at Ridgemont High. Oh, so, hey oh, hey oh, watch it. The jokes will be better at the comedy show tonight, which is why we're here. We have neglected to it. mention that. We've been talking. For You're going to be at the where? Canyon Crest. Uh, Canyon Crest. Yachts. Uh, yacht, Motor Lodge. And Marina. And uh, 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 gin and, uh, distillery. And, I don't know. It's the Canyon Crest. Funky Time yacht Jamboree. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, this is just on the AP wire. We have an, We do have a closing, kids. Um, the Phoenix University Online has closed due to the snow. So apparently the information highway couldn't get Very loud. slick. Again, very the, slick. The jokes will be better at the show, I promise. Well, actually, that's very timely because right now Idaho is in the middle of a lawsuit and getting broadband to the schools, and there's all kinds of controversy. <laughs> so you could absolutely the be right. The highway has timely. been hijacked. You're, you're not yeah. supposed to call them broads. They're, they're females. Right? I know. Right. Come okay. on, Kelly. Okay. <laughs> Come on. The female band highway. Okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. Do we have any respect? We are running out of time. What time Not tonight? Really? Yeah, how What's much up? How much are tickets? What time? Well, hey, uh, for the first, I don't know how you guys want to do it, but we're giving away two tickets because we love you guys. Yay. Yeah. Yay, yay. So, have you got so, them? Yeah, they're at the, you talk to your gal at the front desk. Oh, okay, okay. cool, yeah. So right, if, we'll you do, don't, yeah. if you don't win them, how much do you have to pay? I, yeah. The information's on the $10. Not it's enough. $10, not you enough. guys. I'll tell you that. Not enough. I don't know. $10 in advance, 15 at the door. and Cheap, twice the price. Yeah. 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 The show starts at 8.30, so please come on out. We know the roads are a little iffy right now, but they're going to be good tonight, so brave it. 
You know, you carpool. soccer moms out there, you have a minivan for a <laughs> exactly. Week. Carpool. This is the perfect opportunity. Bring juice look. boxes and snacks. Yes. It'll be good. Come on. So eight thirty to ten thirty. Are you guys going to be uh, family friendly, or is it going to be? It's like... going to be PG thirteen. Okay. To maybe entry level R. So yeah, not too nothing clean, too not bad. too dirty. Okay. Very, very middle of. A lot of people want to know that. The most important yeah. thing is sure. it'll be funny. That's what's important. Gateway R. Huh? Okay. Gateway R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. And uh, Rick, being uh, from the Boston, you you wrote a great book. You actually two books, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I, I love did. the first one, How to Talk to a Yankee Fan. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Is there I'm anything the... written in that, or is it just blank pages? Well, you would think. <laughs> it's funny because uh, uh, Bill Lee, former pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, wrote the foreword. Oh. Actually, and that was his joke. He said when uh, you know when I was asked to write We're the We're going to run out of time. Oh, you want, you sorry, want to, sorry, want to sorry. hang around? Yeah. You want to hang? Hey, it's Friday. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Do you we want have to one more. Jill doesn't you got another. The they got yeah. another station. But we can oh, come back. Look, we love you guys. Hey, tonight, Canyon Crest, 830, $10 in advance, 15 at the door. You guys are funny and uh, Jill's the boss. Look it's gonna for... be a blast, guys. Come <laughs> I'm on out. Sorry. No. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here this morning on Top Story. Welcome back. Oh, I know what I was going to do. What, are you getting a little distracted? This I morning, am. Class? I am. I am so distracted this morning. Just lots of stuff going on, but I am not too distracted to tell you about the folks at Canyon Pond. They've got guns. They've got. Camping stuff, and I sit here every day and I tell you what they've got. And uh, I just happen to think I'm kind of ruining the punchline. Rather than me sitting here telling you what they have at Canyon Pond, you need to go down there and find out for yourself. Just go down there. Would you lose all your copy points? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is a surprise. Every day. It's a new inventory. Are we going to make it to December 31st? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Every well, day is a surprise with you. We were in there, what, a couple of weeks ago? Maybe it was three weeks ago Yeah, now. maybe. And a uh, nice, clean store. It's a, it, a guaranteed it's the cleanest pawn shop you're going to run into in Twin Falls. It's maybe than even, a lot of stores. Maybe, just any store. I, I know. The it's truth. beautiful. It was just clean as a whistle. So don't be afraid to go in there. they got all sorts of neat stuff, guns, and like I said, woodworking supplies, and just all sorts of stuff. They had a yeah. table saw in there. They had a router. Uh, uh, scroll saw. Bicycles, which Man. would be a great little holiday yeah, gift. Yeah. They cooking stuff. Who knows what they have now? We, we should probably just go back every few it. weeks and have lunch and go back. That's just it. We'll do that. Maybe they'll give us the red carpet treatment because yeah. last time they acted like they didn't know we were coming. It's like, do you not <laughs> listen to the show, Dave? Come on. We said we were coming. They were too busy handling their customers. They were. So anyway. The they're, nerve. They're in the, on Shoshone Street across from Will's Toyota. Stop in and say howdy. Yes, please do. Okay, here's the scoop, my friend. A 10th grade biology teacher has apologized, of all things, after a lesson last week aimed at teaching students where their food comes from left some of the poor little snowflakes feeling a little queasy. Oh, oh, do you think anyone would think this was... You don't think an adult would feel queasy on this? Hey, they didn't buckle have to up, be there. Buckle up, people. They buckle up. They didn't have to be. Here's, here's a shocker for you, kids. All of your groceries don't come from the grocery store. <gasps> no kidding. Okay, a teacher brought in a rabbit. Peter Rabbit. And yeah, Peter Rabbit. That they grew little, up listening to Peter the story Cotton on. Tail, well, okay, go on. And did a demonstration about how a rabbit would be prepared as food for a family. According to uh, Allison Westfall. Because so many people Westfall, eat rabbit, go on. According to Allison Westfall, the Nampa School District spokeswoman, the teacher placed the live rabbit in a restraining device. And then snapped its neck in front of the class. Nice. <gasps> oh, the rabbit was also skinned and cut up as part of the demonstration. <clears throat> I gasped a little bit too hard there. <clears throat> Did you? Oh, I'm so sorry, Kelly. Westfall says the educator who has a farm and raises animals to be eaten was initially reluctant to show the students how to prepare a rabbit for a meal. But when the students asked a second time, he relented. The killing was not mandatory viewing for the 16 biology students. The students had asked that the teacher do this demonstration. And when the rabbit was brought in, he gave the opportunity to students to not view the demonstration. Some of the students who elected to stay were upset by the display. I'm sure they were. And the school got a handful of comments from parents who felt 
killing an animal into quest will Mizzou advised. Why do you think it's okay? I think this is, but I think it is, it is the First cycle of, all, of life. It is fine. reality. Why do we have all these kids going out and shooting their friends? It's because we've molly coddled them up clear through college. This is reality. This is what life. is the matter what about with you? Kids who go out hunting this is all the not time? a biology they curriculum. They didn't have to be there. Why they didn't have to if, be if there. If the students asked the teacher to smoke pot, would that be okay? Because they ask you to do it, do you Smoking do it? Smoking pot is first, illegal, first Jill. Of, in some Killing states, a rabbit and eating it is not. Some states it is legal, but my point is this isn't even biology class. This isn't part of the curriculum. It's not biology. That what is, is not what biology. Is biology. That is not biology. The teacher is now facing disciplinary action. Can you believe this? Although Westfall declined to specify whether he had been suspended from teaching, the district is also not releasing the educator's name. It's not appropriate in the 10th grade class. Yeah. These are 16-year-old kids. In some parts of the world, some of them even here, they're having babies by the time they are 16. But we don't talk about that. We it, can't use we the word vagina the... In, so, in Shoshone science class. My gosh. It wasn't approved by the administration, and it's not part of biology class. It's not part of biology class. So that class. judgment is not appropriate for that type of lesson in the classroom at 10th grade. I or agree. Crying out what loud. does that have to do with they biology? Should, they, he should be teacher of the year. Really? To kill All a, the kids to kill should a rabbit see that. And skin All the kids should yeah. understand the cycle of life. Guess how many life. people will become vegetarians because of that? That's Thank fine. you very if much. If they want to do that, that's fine. How that's many, outrageous. How many kids, how many people, for that matter, realize that the meat you see at the meat counter at the at the grocery store actually comes from feedlots. Why didn't he just and it's go not and grown shoot it? in the back of the Why store? Why didn't he just shoot a cow and skin it? My gosh, that it's not part fine. but it's not part of biology class. So what? There's so, a lot of things you do in school that's not part of the class. Really? And yes. then when it is part of the class and the teachers complain about teaching about anatomy, oh my goodness, that is part of the class, but biology class, that's not to to skin and kill a rabbit and skin it is not biology. Did he cook it too? I mean, wouldn't that be home ec or something? They should have, he should have and then they would have had lunch. Oh, then they yes. would have had the full cycle of the demonstration. Right. What do you think? Should the teacher get in trouble or was he out of line? Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Well, most people weren't raised like you and I, butchering animals and so forth. That's a bit of a shock to the eastern sissies like Jill that don't know about butchering animals. Really? Um, but, uh, you know, it. For some of these people from Chicago and Massachusetts, they 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 don't understand butchering animals. This is Nam this was Nampa. Especially, especially in Chicago, Nampa. they don't seem to have a hard time in killing people, but killing a rabbit, oh my heavens. Would you kill someone in class and go, here's how you kill someone? No. I mean, it's now, not see, part now of... Now you're being ridiculous. No, this isn't part of biology class. So this what? Isn't biology. So what? He's a biology teacher. It could be part teacher. of biology class. So anytime a student... I'm surprised. Anytime a student asks a teacher to do something, you should do something? I mean, who's the teacher? Who's the student? This you have a, a curriculum. This what was, was the lesson in? excellent lesson. lesson. What was the lesson it's in. called the cycle of life, Jill. Really? They yes. need to hear that? Why don't they teach them about where babies are made and maybe half these kids won't be pregnant by the time they graduate? Maybe they Talking do. Talking about the cycle maybe of life. Maybe they do. Not in Idaho, they don't. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story, you're on the air. Uh, yes, when I did biology, uh, they had frogs. What's the difference? Do they still have frogs? I don't think do they, they still, still do I think that. They, I think they have to do it on computer now because too oh. many of the snowflakes were upset <laughs> about the dead frog in the jar of formaldehyde. <laughs> You're right. Oh, I don't know. We are raising a generation of sissies, ladies and gentlemen. Why is it a sissy that you don't want to see an animal killed in front of your eyes? And start showing these kids the reality of life. Things are just going to get worse. We can't Seven, even teach them about the birds and the bees. Give me a break. Are you kidding? They do that every Every day. They do not. They do. That's why we have the highest pregnancy rate in this they're county. They're teaching them in school. I no, learned they aren't. that they're in teaching, junior they're high. They're teaching them in the back seat of a car. Oh, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Seven three six zero three hundred. Top story. You're on the air. Was he out of line, or should he get an award? Oh, he, he was totally in line. <clears throat> uh, we don't know what the teaching curricul curric curriculum was going on that day. Has the man cut up the rabbit? Did he say, well, here is the lungs, here is the heart, here is the digestive system? 
Heavens, it might have been a total educational teaching class. See, that's what I. And uh, apparently, thinking. according to his administration, it was not part of biology class, and it was not appropriate for that type of lesson. They said, so the well, school was not behind that. That wasn't in the curriculum. It, you know, okay. Uh, if that happened to your let, tenth let, grader, let, let, what would you do? Let, let's take let's take a world history class. Uh, and all of a sudden something goes on in, in world history where you've got your instructor going on up and saying, well, all these, all, all these uh, African innocent girls were kidnapped and raped and sold as slaves in Africa. Is that part of, is that part of world history? It's not very pleasant to talk about that it happens every day. But, but if this isn't part of the curriculum, it isn't part of his curriculum to take a rabbit, break its neck, skin it in front of his students. So is that really part of biology when you're supposed to be talking about cell and function and growth and, and uh, study of life and, and, and living organisms? I mean, they said this isn't part of the curriculum. I don't think he should have so done it. you can dissect a frog, but you can't dissect a rabbit. Well, I don't think they dissected it. He killed it and skinned it in front of them. That's part of dissecting. Apparently, you got to get the it's skin not off a- so you can dissect them. I don't think he went on to dissect it. He probably went on to saute it. Uh, well, that would he was be talking fine, about, too. That's the kid not probably part of this would have class. been impressed with that. You know, it's amazing to me that, you know, when you actually teach science in a class, the Dietrich uh, teacher is suspended for saying the word vagina, but here, you know, you actually kill something in class outside of your curriculum, and, and that's, and that's okay. That's not science? Apparently, it's not biology. Oh, uh, th- And the school wrong. said it that. It is biology. Oh, that's what biology is. That is not what biology is. What is biology? To sit there and kill an animal in front of you and skin it, that's not biology. It's part it's of it. It's learning about, apparently I, it's not, Kelly, and I've taken biology classes, so. So have I. Have you? Seven, three, six, Maybe they zero, teach them differently out in Idaho than they did in Ohio. Obviously. Clearly. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Hi. Hey, I think it's interesting. I would bet that the last three men who called in voted for Ubarra. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. But my other this thing... Might be, a, like, this uh, might be our new biology all, class is going exactly, forward. Exactly. <laughs> right. Seriously. I mean, that was an ignorant comment that that one man made about, like, the East Coast. Yeah. If you're going to call in, have an educated opinion. But to just be degrading is so ridiculous, and it's embarrassing. But why I called was this teacher should have known better, first of all, he should have sent a letter home to the parents. If it was an opt-in or opt-out assignment, then that's fine, but send a note home to the parents so the parents are aware. I would clear with my administration first and say, hey, this is what the students want, this is what I would like to do in the classroom, and the principal can okay it or say, no, that's not okay. And yeah, you don't do it just because the kids ask. Are you kidding me? I know. Could you imagine? See, what would the so kids ask situation, you to do? So we can't yeah, teach the cycle the of point, life in school anymore. No, no, no. That's not even the point of this. The point is the teacher should have known better. The teacher is the adult and the one in charge of the classroom. The teacher knows that there is, you go through certain, you have to for your curriculum. You have to get some things approved. If, it's, if you're thinking outside of the box, that's great. But you should have these things approved first, and your principal should be on board and be aware of what's going on. And if you're doing something like this, when there was dissecting, parents were always aware of what was happening. And you could say, yes, I want my child to participate, or no, I don't want my child to participate. And that's, to me, all that needed to happen here. And if the principal was on board and said, yeah, let's just send notes home, parents were aware, those kids who... You know, the parents could say, listen, what you're going to see might be a little bit gruesome and disturbing to watch this, but if you feel like you want to see this, then I'll support it. So to me, the teacher was so misguided and just really acted, I I don't know, to me it's almost like he's trying to be the hero and the kid's friend, and you just should have used some common sense there and cleared this with parents. Well, and just, your administration. just so you know, he was hesitant to do this at first, and then they came to him and said they would like to see the demonstration. So he said, okay, but you don't have to watch it if you don't want to. And you so know what? He, I don't he think has... he was trying to be a hero. I think he was probably somewhat impressed that the kids wanted to see part of this demonstration. Well, he had a farm. Cycle of life. If he had a farm, if he wanted to show them, then I think he could do it at his own personal farm and uh, have the parents take their kids if they want to. I don't think it was appropriate for biology class, and I don't think they should have done it just because the kids wanted them to. 736-0300. Got time for one more opinion here. Top story, you're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Doing great. How are you? Cool. Hey, you know, I 
personally think that kids ought to be exposed to stuff like this more often. Um, it, we really have disconnected our kids from reality, and that's part of the problem. You know, one of the uh, callers pointed out that, you know, they don't know what it means for something to be dead. Um, yeah, the teacher should have, could have done a lot of other things like the previous lady said. I agree with that totally. But bottom line, I think that that's an appropriate lesson. Um, I, I when think, I, when, no, when no. I was in school, we, we brought in, shoot, when we slaughtered a steer, I took in lungs for the um, a demonstration in health class because of um, uh, regarding lungs and smoking. Did you, sl- did you slaughter it in front of the kids? Not the steer, no. Right. You know, so I do mean, you think you would have? You know what? We did in um, FFA. Well, FFA is different than, I think, this uh, 10th grade biology class. Well, um, they got 10th graders in FFA. Then you know what? Hey, you they know what? got Then transfer to FFA. I think the guy was wrong. Take him to bottom, your farm and show him. Bottom line is the teacher should get an award, a teacher of the year or something no like way. that. We need more teachers like that. Oh, Coming yes. up, we got Nathan Jerky with the Idaho Transportation Department right here on Top Story. Welcome back to Top Story, 736-0300, always the number to call. Welcome back, Jill. Thanks, Kelly. Same to you. We have Nathan Jerky with us this morning from the Idaho Transportation Department. Good morning, sir. Good morning, guys. Nathan, I'm surprised you were able to make it in today. It's a short mile and a half drive from my house to here, so I made her, (laughs) almost got hit once, but I made it. What about all the responsibilities you have? People think um, you guys are in charge of everything here. Uh, well, we take care of the highways, try to clear the roads off as well, uh, the, the state highways, the interstate routes as well as we can during these storms. Uh, um, but uh, fortunately, I got to uh, just come from my house this morning. So, <laughs> so Nathan, when they plan a storm like this, because they were talking for a few days, how mm-hmm. do you guys get ready? Do you do you think, well, are they really right? Or are they not right? Do you have your own um, equipment? We we listen to several forecasts usually. Uh, whether usually K- ours, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. we listen to like KMVT. We watch uh, the National Weather Service. We look at uh, all the weather bugs that are out there, and usually one of them is going to be pretty close to darn near right. <laughs> so so uh, when do you start saying, okay, we have to start preparing? The the key is to choose which one. <laughs> well, it, it, we're prepared whichever, with whichever one we go. Yeah. I mean, you go with all of them. You, you're prepared one way or the other. Usually they are all coalesce the last 24 hours, and, and we yeah. have a pretty good uh, idea what's going to happen, when it's going to hit. Um, so what when we start preparing is about 24 to 48 hours, uh, start getting people's schedules manipulated, knowing our crews have to be in at a certain time when the storm is going to start hitting. Like yesterday, the snow started hitting down Nevada line about 5 a.m. So we had plows out south of Twin Falls starting bright and early, well before the sun was up. It didn't even get to Shoshone until, oh, shoot, it was 10 o'clock in the morning before it got to Shoshone. The snow yeah. even started flying there. And uh, further north, it, it, except for on Galena Summit, uh, there wasn't snow hitting uh, Haley in the Wood River Valley till afternoon. So huh. uh, we watched those weather. We watched the clouds as they're going through. And we get the plows out on the road when they need to be. We, we try not to get people out there when there's no snow. Why chase a snowflake? You, yeah, you, you, yeah. Get, you yeah. get it when it hits the ground. Well, or, and and sometimes we do some pre-treating as well. We get out there, put to hmm. what we call salt brine, um, and uh, that actually keeps the ice from, um, from forming on the roadway uh, if the temperatures are correct. It was actually a little too cold yesterday to be using uh, some pre-treaters like a salt brine because uh, that only keeps the water wet to about uh, 15, 12 to 15 degrees, and then at that point, it's going to freeze no matter, no matter uh. what. So Nathan, when yeah. how how do you know how much salt to buy? And when you know it kind of hit us quickly. I mean, Sunday last Sunday, my husband was playing golf, and then boom. You know, sure. h- how prepared in advance are you, or do you just have salt all year round, or what? Um, the let's see, winter ended at about the um, uh, first of March last year. We start preparing the next day. Uh, we get the plows in, uh, start doing repairs on the plows, the plow harnesses, the sanding beds, uh, and get that all ready to go. We order our salt and sand, and have the, usually that's in stock by uh, stockpiled in our sheds by in June and July. So we're ready for winter come mm. August. It's it's re- really uh, 
How much salt do you go through in a season I, on average? Because I know it can. I can't it remember can how many cubic cubic uh, yards or tons that we have ordered. But uh, um, la- last year, I believe we were at about what we spent during uh, winter of thirteen fourteen was at about uh, one point five million dollars worth of salt and sand mixture wow. uh, throughout our district, South Central wow. Idaho. That's just the just the sand and salt. Yes, one and a half million dollars. Yes, just just for those supplies. Then you still have uh, material, or you still have the, the truck costs. What yeah. it costs to drive the truck down the road. You have your uh, personnel costs as well. So uh, that all tallies up to a pretty decent number. But I, I've not, I've guess I've not seen that number all collated into one big. Uh, it would be cost. too yeah. shocking, I think, Nathan. <laughs> too well, shocking but, for you but to we're, see we're that number. We're also doing what the public wants. We want yeah. they, the public wants to have clear roads. It costs that much to clear the roads. Yeah. Our, yeah. our state highways, our interstates, and we get try to get the roads cleared as fast as we can at the, uh, during a storm event and following a storm event. And no matter how fast you are or good you are, you're still not fast enough or good enough for some, right? We can't we can't make them perfect. Unfortunately, <laughs> the the ice forms faster than our trucks can go around. We are yeah. limited in staff. We can't have a plow every every three miles. And yeah. sometimes that's we don't want that as well because you have to give the salt and the sand time to work into the snow, yeah. break up the snow so we can come back an hour later and plow it off the road. Sometimes it's... Uh, so you build a ice sheet, a snow floor. Sometimes you get the salt and sand in there. It has you tires, uh, traffic actually do a really good job working that into yeah. the snow yeah. and breaking it up, melting it, and then we come back. You, we need the time and the traffic on top of the snow for it to break up before we can come along and chisel the snow off the roadway. Anyway, have you gotten any complaints? Just from my father-in-law. Isn't He's the only figure. one to call so far this morning. And I even on my email, I get all my voicemails at work on my email as well. So I, if, if anybody left me a message at work, I would know about it. But I haven't heard any so far Except today. your father-in-law. Except for my father-in-law. And what did he want? I don't know. I didn't call him back. Nice. Does he listen to the show? Maybe I'll he can find call out in about an hour. When maybe I call he can call in with his complaint, and we can answer it on air. Seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call. Talk to your son in law, Nathan yeah. Jerky. There or anybody go. can call right Anyone, now. Anyone, yeah, if you have any questions, yeah. About this, because I know we had the big truck accident last night, and you don't know much about that, I guess. I don't have any specifics on uh, how many vehicles were involved or uh, how the cleanup effort is. Uh, mm-hmm. It's ITD doesn't really take a uh, well. We're we're there. We don't, but we don't take a hands-on approach until ISP, the sheriff's office office uh, we're called in to help put down some salt sand if they need help with traction on the plow or the tow trucks things like that uh, what we generally do if the road is closed we help with the detour routes uh, we make sure that uh, we try to get the alternate routes uh, as cleared off as well as possible i guess in this case they're using a frontage road as a uh, as yeah. the alternate route so we try to we throw a plow out there and try to clear that roadway put some salt and sand down there try to create some grip for the vehicles that have to be on that roadway as, as opposed to our interstate while it's closed and then we get the plows out there while they're cleaning up the the traffic accident and um, and try to get that area cleaned up as well while while the, the law enforcement's working. For those who don't know or might be uh, traveling through the area, there is a big truck accident during the night at the uh, milepost 201, the Casota Road exit. That's between Twin Falls and Burley. Uh, and they did both, apparently both eastbound and westbound of the interstate were closed, but they are rerouting traffic uh on the frontage roads. But now the, I understand, uh, had a friend who went through that area a while ago and said the frontage roads are in pretty bad shape too. So just be very, very careful. Yeah. Sometimes the counties, uh, the, the highway districts don't have a chance to get out there and uh, do the yeah. same level of treatment on the roadways that the state does or a city like city of twin falls does. They don't have the number of plows or they don't have the amount of, uh, salt sand materials that they get to scatter out on the roadway. So they usually just focus on intersections, try to secure those, but the straight stretches, like on that frontage road, there's not a lot of intersections, a lot of straight right. stretches. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be slippery because it ha- probably hasn't seen much treatment. How yeah. do you plan for the winter? I mean, is there a formula that you use? I mean, you don't know if it's going to be a bad winter or an easy winter. That That's the tough part. We uh, just take our historical data, try to figure it, try to speculate over what we've had over the last 10, 15 years and say, okay, this is an amount of salt and sand that is generally about enough uh, for to get last throughout the year. Uh, it was about four years ago. We had a good heavy winter, and we actually had to order in more salt uh, in about mid-February hmm. just to get us through the winter. Um, it does happen that we have to come in and, and bring in more if we have a bad winter, but uh, that doesn't happen very often. Is there, ever a sh- uh, is there ever a shortage, like if other states are having bad winters as well? Mm-hmm. Yes. and Because I know some states go through tons. I mean, I used to live in Massachusetts. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, a lot of the northeastern states go through a lot. Uh, Colorado uses a lot of salt as well, and uh, they're one of our primary uh, um, 
I guess competitors for in that mar- in the Northwest market is, is hmm. Colorado. Uh, so, uh, so who can order well, it first? Yeah, it, it really does come down to who runs now, first. So they can throw marijuana on the road. We'll take the salt. They don't care about no stinking slippery <laughs> roads. Right. They're home smoking pot and yeah, eating munchies. Eating Cheetos, that's I don't right. know. But no. So how do you get, how do you get that? What if there is a shortage? Has there been a sh- shortage in the past, or just like not uh, getting it to you in time? You know, sometimes you just have to spend a little bit more to get it here. Okay. That, you know, that's if. But if the winter's that bad, we still have to maintain our roadways and get people to where they need to go. Now, yeah. is that actually salt, or is it a chemical that's not as harsh on automobiles? Uh, most of it is straight salt. Uh, no. There are uh, some areas of the state that uses a, a magnesium chloride as opposed to the sodium chloride, uh, and it's it's generally in liquid form. Uh, but uh, so we usually that has a lower freezing temperature. The mag chloride does. So we use that in colder areas. We have it up in uh, the Haley and Stanley area for mm-hmm. us, as well as uh, I think there's. Uh, one tank of uh, mag chloride over in the sublet area to go up over Sweetser oh, Summit. Yeah. So uh, just because that lower freezing temperature actually brings it down another about five to eight degrees. So it does help in, in just a little bit more, but it does help. Is using the salt, is it hard on vehicles or are vehicles? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, yeah. it, it, salt is corrosive, and yeah. uh, we do uh, recommend that people... But do you want a pretty car or, or clean roads? Huh? Do you want, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the question. Do you want, do you want yeah. to have a dirty car or do you want to have a safe road to drive on? Um, what well, how we've, long what did... we've been told is we, people want, would rather have a, a good, clear road as opposed to and, and be able to go clean their car afterwards. Because yeah. your car will be bashed, and it won't be so pretty then if you can't get on the roads. But how long does it take for it to start being corrosive? I mean, should you wash your car within 24 hours or what? Oh, no. Uh, salt takes a, a while to work. I mean, yeah, I guess immediately it does start working, but it takes years of, of, uh, of exposure to salt before okay. you're going to rust out the bottom of your car so just if you just get it yeah, washed if you get it washed once or wash. twice through the winter you probably get uh, most of the salt uh, material off the vehicle and you'll be all right which most people do clean their car once or twice during the winter I, I, i'm not one of them but most people do <laughs> i'm not either i live down a quarter mile gravel lane and, and there's no reason for me to clean my vehicle yeah, exactly because it would be a waste of money <laughs> oh goodness but sometimes you do like to see the color of your car you know so how's the uh, 80 mile an hour speed limit doing People either love it or hate it. It's pretty much split down the middle. Um, and, and honestly, uh, ITD was, was just following the law. The the law passed the legislature. We, we <laughs> went out and did... You were for or against, were you, Nathan? It, you just it, had to do what you had to do because <laughs> it was so urgent. It changed the speed limit, wasn't it? Well, well yeah, I guess it wasn't the most urgent thing, but they passed the law. We went out there and was we were prepared on July 1st to change the speed limits. Uh, we did the engineering studies as mandated by law uh, to... to and but then it was delayed a few weeks, wasn't it? It, it was Why? delayed a few weeks just because it kind of caught I, even our transportation board by surprise. They, they, Did they not read the news? <laughs> <laughs> that's, when they, that's when they found out. Well, they, they, we, we just went out there and was doing our dutiful duty, changing or doing the speed studies, the engineering studies, making sure that the roadway could handle the, the increased speed limit. And uh, we did not go before the board with the actual item saying, we're going to follow the law and change the speed limit. We're going to uh, or, um, and do what legislatures instructed us to do they wanted us to at least bring it to them at the next board me- meeting so that's what itd ended up doing going to them making sure that we had their approval the the transportation board had their approval before uh, going out and actually changing the signs and they they were okay with it they just wanted to be informed <laughs> so they wow. just wanted to be part they of the just process want so much right. don't they yeah. come on <laughs> so have you seen have they start compiling any statistics on accidents or things like that is would itd do that or would it be more the um state police we, uh, it, it, ITD does collate all of the uh, statistics, crash d- data around the state. On a, so kind of how it works is there's a crash on, a, on a, any given day. At the end of the month, uh, sheriff's departments, cities, ISP, they're supposed to get the data to ITD. And at the end of the year, ITD starts putting together all the data. Um, we usually don't have all of the compiled data until um, late spring, early summer. Uh, and that's when we actually come out and say, this is where our high accident locations are. These are problem areas. Um, and so that's, it takes a while for all the data to really come out and prove itself. You can't just use a two or three months worth of data because you, you might have just had a unique case. You might have had yeah, a yeah. bad rainstorms in August, or you might have had a yeah. few really early... Big windstorms. Yeah, big windstorms, a lot of ice storms, things like that, that contributed to it more so than just the speed limit itself. Yeah, okay. And we're going to actually follow up with you on the windstorm of St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yes. 
Uh, Nathan Jerky is with us from the Idaho Transportation Department, and our number is 736-0300. We'll be right back. 736-0300 is the number to call. And by the way, in case you're keeping track, it's like 36 right now. Oh, so. I'll have to take off one of my sweaters. Yeah, one of the sweaters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have That's two That's the key. Exactly. Yeah. We have Nathan Jerky with us from the uh, Idaho Transportation Department. But before we get back to that, the uh, Happy Landing Restaurant at the Twin Falls Airport brings you daily the word of the day. Mm. And... Uh, as you eat at the Happy Landing restaurant, it's at the Twin Falls Airport, homemade food. If it's your first time visit, you tell them that you heard about it on uh, here on KLIX with uh, Jill and Kelly. And if you purchase a drink or a meal, they will give you a free piece of homemade pie. Free piece of pie, Nathan. How does that sound? That's worth a trip to the airport. That's actually about the closest restaurant to my house. Yeah, So that would be great. Tell them we sent you. Get a free piece of pie. And it it is handy because they do takeout, too. So every once in a while, I'll call them up and I'll go. Cause I'm, oh, I is that, that right? right? Is that what you do? Yeah, that's You just right. call up and say, Kelly Class, give me my usual? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> but Kelly can't get the pie. Happy Landing Restaurant at the Twin Falls Airport. Tell them we sent you. Uh, yesterday's $100 instant winning name is Terry Bivens. Terry Bivens, congratulations. And your $100 word of the day is paper. Paper. P-A-P-E-R. Paper. Go to our website, newsradio1310.com. Click on word of the day. Type in paper. Listen Monday. If you're here, you name Monday and you play the word today, you win 100 bucks coming mm. your way. That is not That's a bad deal at all. That's how easy it is. Uh, Nathan Jerky is with us from Idaho Transportation Department, and we have a caller. Top story. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nathan, I'm less concerned about the 80 mile per hour speed limit on I-84 than I am about other things that I believe Idaho Department of Transportation is responsible for. I mean, for heaven's sakes, uh, people have been driving 80 on I-84 for years. Uh, when the <laughs> speed faster. limit went back went back to 70 or 75 from 55, and the state was told that it would be a no t- tolerant speed limit. Uh, that that never really proved to be the case, and so speed has always been a challenge on that freeway, and it's either it's either speed up or get run over. However, in the county, and I am told by law enforcement that that the county speed limits are set by the Idaho Department of Transportation, and I can only speak for the area that I live in, where my farm is at. Increasingly, uh, the side roads are becoming very dangerous. I noticed that uh, within the last couple of months, the speed limit on on one of the on, on many of the side roads has gone from 45 for trucks and 50 for cars up to 50 for everybody. And during um, during harvest, it was unbelievable the speeds that uh, these large trucks were traveling, and many avoid uh, Poline Road. So that they can drive at a higher speed on the side on the side road. So, who who keeps an eye on those uh, speed limits? Okay. Um, excuse me. Actually, uh, the highway districts uh, have and cities they have jurisdiction over their own speed limits, their own roadways. They're in charge to get uh, speed studies, uh, engineering studies for their own roadways. Uh, IS, ITD only uh, takes care of state highways and the interstate. Um, and everybody's falls under the same uh, set of st- uh, state statutes uh, to go out and ha- you have to have the engineering and traffic studies to uh, manipulate your speed limits on any given road. They race. can't just randomly say, you know what, we could probably put that at 50 miles an hour and everything would be fine. Okay? Exactly. Everything has to be backed up, uh, justified through an engineering and traffic study. Uh, and mm-hmm. the, the how traffic or speed limits are generally set is uh, one of uh, one of the major uh, roles is uh, the 80. It's called the 85th percentile. Uh, what what speed is 85 percent of the traffic going down the roadway? Uh, and and you still have to ensure that that's a safe speed limit for that roadway through the engineering. You, you know, if, if it's a straight flat stretch, 50 miles an hour. If everybody's driving 50 miles an hour, it's generally uh, accepted that that's a safe speed. Uh, it, that, that's just that's the engineering theory behind. So behind it's based the just on is is it based like on, like that gentleman said in a farming area there might be a lot of uh, tractors and stuff on the road. Mm-hmm. Do they take any of that into consideration? There is a lot of other things taken into consideration. Uh, what we call uh, roadside friction, which is the number of accesses, uh, how many uh, residential and business accesses that go onto a roadway, as well as. Uh, 
Well, you, you take the traffic counts, type of vehicles that use the roadway, whether it's trucks, uh, vehicles. Um, do you do counter uh, throw in their agricultural vehicles as well? Um, and but those are those factor into the speed study. You uh, yeah. so if generally we do speed study studies during uh, for about a week long, uh, and you do that uh, during. Uh, premium weather conditions so you don't do speed studies in the middle of winter yeah, when you can yeah. when that manipulate that can change your data you do it during the summertime when it's dry uh, good conditions for everybody to drive um, so that way you get the best data and remember speed limits are only a maximum speed you're not you're not mandated to go that speed you can always go slower uh, unfortunately there are a lot unless of unless you're uh, from utah on unless, the interstate yeah. Yeah. there's a lot of aggressive uh, drivers out there that um, it, it does become a law enforcement issue. It, it's an yeah. enforcement of the yeah. law. ITD just does the engine, engineering and traffic studies to say that, yes, the roadway is safe at this speed, but if people drive You're faster, not arresting it's an them, right, Nathan? Exactly. <laughs> ITD does not have enforcement capabilities, uh, nor does the port of entry people, uh, for people that uh, think that they can write tickets, but they can't actually enforce any uh, laws besides writing tickets. But uh, it comes down to county sheriffs, uh, ISP. So th that's really where you need to talk to is the law enforcement side. Uh, people going 60 on, in a 50 down the county road is still breaking the speed limit. So you need to yeah. be talking to your local sheriff and uh, letting them know that that's an issue in your area. All right. Uh, Nathan Jerky with the Yadaho Transportation Department with us this morning here on Top Story. Seven three six zero three zero zero is always the number to call here on Top Story, and I know that this is the last thing that's on your mind right now, but it will be coming up here in about three or four months, and that's irrigation. And uh, infrared barren is something that they do at uh, Far More of Idaho. This is an overflight of your field. They take pictures of your field in infrared photography, which opens up a whole new world of what you can see and how your field is doing. So you need to ask them about this and get set up for it so when irrigation season starts again, uh, you will be up and running. And uh, you can make decisions uh, what to do with your irrigation system based on these pictures. You might think that your field is, being pl is getting plenty wet everywhere, but you might be mistaken too. And that'll show it up in this infrared photography uh, that they do with uh, Infrared Baron at Farmore of Idaho. Give them a call. Ask them about it. 324-3341, uh, farmoreofidaho.com. They are online, and they would love to help you out with that. That's how that works. All right, so... Not long ago, I guess it was on St. Patrick's Day, it was really, really windy. Yes. The wind and incident of St. Patty's Day. That's right. It was the St. <laughs> Patty's Day massacre. <laughs> for trucks. Uh, yeah, for trucks on bridges. Aye. And we had issues on the Prime Bridge and the Hanson Bridge both. Yes. And the truckers were kind of complaining because there was no warning or anything like that. But I understand the cavalry is on the way. Well, they did have a windsock. Yeah, there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about that windsock, Kelly. One of, one of the truckers was out there holding up one of yeah. his socks. Yeah. yeah, which fills up anyway every yeah. day. So, okay, Nathan, <laughs> what have you guys done to solve this problem? Uh, it's it's taken a little bit longer to uh, I guess come up with a plan of attack for this uh, than we anticipated. We'd hope to have something up within three to four months, uh, but. Generally in Idaho, the wind is is a spring issue. At least the major winds are a spring issue. So uh, that three to four months, we would have missed mo most of the major wind for the year anyhow. But uh, we plan on uh, having um, a wind advisory system, a wind warning system, I guess, more than anything, out on both the Prine and Hanson bridges uh, before the next spring, uh, if everything goes right, if the funding comes in and the what is that to. Uh, what is it two wind socks or no <laughs> <laughs> no usually the wind socks just blow right off that's yeah, that was yeah. one of the big issues at the Prine bridge was we had a wind sock mid bridge and one on the north side those ones always blew off oh, and wow. they, they'd come right off of the off and so we <laughs> nathan that's when they knew the winds were extreme yeah exactly so and when there's there no winds no... wind socks don't go off the bridge mm. but is this going to stop people before they get over the bridge what's your system uh, the, there's we we've kind of determined really because of the amount of trucks and uh, vehicles that go over the road over the bridges it would be tough to uh, store these the number of trucks that if we did actually stop trucks oh, yeah. south of south let's say south of uh, the Prime Bridge in Twin Falls where would we store trucks we can't yeah. tell them to go park in a private lot like at the mall at Target yeah. Walmart you know backing them up we can't stop them on the highway because then we would completely close down the entire town. But uh, what we can do is put up advisory uh, warning signs saying, hey, the wind's over 30 miles an hour. Uh, warn uh, high-profile vehicles, RVs and trucks, slow down. If you go slower, your your mass stays lower. But once you start, pick up, start picking up speed, you, you actually 
create a air air pillow. I yeah. guess is one way of saying it underneath yeah. your vehicle, and you're more likely to fall over. So or Nathan, be blown so over. no matter how hard the wind is blowing, if you go small, uh, um, uh, uh, slower. Thank you. <laughs> a slower speed limit, you will not blow over. I can't say you won't blow over. Uh, I mean, like a tornado. Obviously, you're going to get blown over at we some point. We have tornadoes here, but, but uh, yeah. Uh, but with our winds, we usually max out in the 60s. Uh, it's pretty rare we get anything above about. I think on St. Patrick's Day, our maximum wind speed was 68 miles an hour, and that's I think one of the highest wind speeds I can ever recall. Definitely in my time with ITD. Um, but did the, you do studies on 30 miles an hour that you the, could that have, a truck the, would be ma- safe to cross? Yeah, there a have bridge been that... studies done uh, in other states, uh, so ITD did not initiate or. But we're just taking the studies that have been done in other parts of the country. Uh, Oklahoma, Texas is I think is where we got most of our, our information from. Uh, and but about 30 miles an hour is when we start. If you got a big empty truck that 30 miles an hour you start seeing a lot of wiggle a lot of a lot of movement in those trucks and they can get not necessarily blown over but maybe blown into another lane or or uh yeah. pushed around quite a bit so that's so 30 miles an hour is probably about where we're going to set the marker for the flashing lights signs to come on uh or to be more more apparent to people hopefully um so we have a caller actually okay yeah top story you're up. well we had i guess caller. not okay now here's another one that's ringing let's try that one top story you're on the air with nathan jerky Hey, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, if an airplane drives really slow, will it get off the ground? Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> I mean, that's, one, that's for Jill. Anyway, it's so funny. Um, I forgot to laugh. Anyway, Nathan, so, well, I mean, there is a certain level where you had to decide, you know, if they're yeah. going to blow. Or, I mean, it's not a, a truck in... Just to inform the listener, a truck is not a plane. But anyway, go on. Yeah, we uh, – <laughs> no, okay. Oh, maybe okay. there's it another keep, joke. It just Come keeps on. running here. Top story, you're on the air. You got a quick question? Uh, yes. Uh, what happened to the slow traffic keep right on four-lane roads? Slow uh, traffic keep right on four-lane roads. Well, we'll ask him that when we come back from the break here on Top Story with Nathan Jerky from ITD. Seven three six zero three zero zero is the number to call here on Top Story. Welcome back. We got uh, Nathan Jerky with the Idaho Transportation Department. We got a caller waiting, but we had a question. What happened to those signs? That says slower traffic, keep right. And that one, I offhand, I don't know the the specific answer to. Uh, I don't know if there was a change in law some years ago that uh, actually. Uh, made it so that's not a, a requirement. It's just a recommendation that traffic should stay to the right. It's a courtesy to that you stay right when going down like the interstate. Uh, we do have the uh, keep right except to pass on areas like US 93 uh, towards jackpot uh, where we have passing lanes. Uh, but uh, the, right now in the driver's manual, it says you're not required to be in the right-hand lane. And a lot of times if it's a, like an urban highway uh, like um, US 93, US 30 coming into Twin Falls, uh, or Kimberly Road, it, it's you have people that turn left. There's a lot of left-hand turning, so yeah. they can't necessarily be in the right-hand lane if they're slower than you are because they need to change yeah. lanes. But on you, on I-84, I, I, I'll have to research that more and find out and try to get a specific answer. So I encourage the caller to uh, contact me at the office up in Shoshone uh, in, sometime next week, and I will research that and see if I can find a little bit more information. All right. Okay, great. We got another got caller. caller. Top story. You're on the air with Nathan Jerky. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, Nathan, a couple of questions. Do you, on a engineering study, take into account mailboxes, uh, roadside garbage pickup, uh, school bus stops as part of your pedestrian traffic? Be the first question. Oh, wow. Um, so, for instance, sure. no, Highway I, 74, where it any, enters Twin Falls uh, on Washington Street, it's uh, 45 miles an hour, but yes. there's a lot of uh, uh, pedestrian-type traffic that may not be accounted for. Sure. So, the, you know, wondering if uh, you've got a mailbox out front, if you consider that a pedestrian because they're on the roadside. Yeah, we do uh, visual pedestrian counts, uh, so uh, we can't do the same thing like we do with uh, automobile counts, which we can put out the counter tubes. We count the number of vehicles. We can... Uh, uh, factor in their speed with those tubes out on the roadway so we, we those that's all automatic it's kind of hard to do a pedestrian count necessarily uh, but we do go out and do visual checks whenever doing those traffic uh, and engineering studies and so it, it some days there's a lot of pedestrians some days there's not so that does get factored in but it's it's 
kind of subjective because you don't know ex- exactly how much there is out there. There's no way of calculating it. You can't have them. Well, consistently your mailboxes would create a pedestrian, especially if you have a pedestrian crossing the roadway to get to their mailbox. Certainly. Well, that would factor in with uh, the roadside friction, the number of accesses. We probably, you know, we, we assume that there's going to be so many vehicles in and out of a residential uh, access approach on a given any given day. If there's a business approach, we account that there's uh, generally going to be a certain number of vehicles in and out, depending on the type of industry. Uh, so those do, that roadside friction does get accounted into the, the engineering study. Question uh, number two. I, um, residential district on US 30 over by Murta. Can you tell me what the factor was that uh, created that residential district and that lower speed limit? The, num- the amount of turning traffic off of the highway was a primary one uh, because there's the LDS stake center there. There's the small store. There's the county road that turns north to go to Murtaugh. There's about six or seven houses in that three-quarter mile where it's 45. Uh, there's, the, I guess, a lot of activity that takes place right there. While it, it doesn't, well, it's not conducive to the people that are just driving through on Highway 30, it does create a safety cushion, I guess, for no- lack of another word, um, for the people that live there that uh, visit the the church, the store, and are turning on and off the onto the county roadway. We got just a couple of minutes left for some winter driving tips. Yeah, uh, just one of the things I brought along just in case. Uh, uh, not only when you get into this time of year, not only should you be sure and have your vehicle prepared for winter, you know, have your uh, your antifreeze checked and in your car, make sure your tire pressure is proper, uh, make sure that everything mechanically works with your vehicle. But it's always a good idea, just because we do live in a very rural state with a lot of big open spaces, if you do slide off, your, off the road, you don't know how long you might be sitting there. So I just wanted to remind people some things that might be good to have in your car, uh, whether you can cram them into a duffel bag, just sit in your trunk or in the back seat. Um, make sure, you, like, if you have a cell phone, that's a good thing to have. But be sure you have possibly a portable charger yeah. that you can plug in uh, or an extra battery, depending on you know, the age and model of your phone. Um, it, a little shovel, a little fold-up shovel or a telescoping shovel to throw in your trunk. Um, obviously, most of us have windshield scraper, uh, battery-powered radio. Just in case you you run out of gas or your car becomes disabled, you might uh, not be able to listen to the radio and know what's what's and happening. And you can still listen to our show. That's, That's right. <laughs> most importantly, let's hope you break yeah. down between eight and ten. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, other other <laughs> things uh, like flashlight. Probably more important is uh, how do you keep. If you're going to be there for more than a few hours, you're going to get hungry and cold. Have yeah. extra have extra clothes. Have a, a couple blankets. Have uh, warmer socks. Pa- maybe a pair of boots. Um, have have some water. It might freeze, but you can always defrost that with body heat. You know, tuck it yeah. in your armpit or something. Yeah. Uh, have some uh, non perishable food items. Granola bars. M and M's like the lady out in uh, out in the hills in Nevada had. A year's something supply, that's a year a supply of Tic Tacs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, chains rope in case you do slide off you can get towed off the road um first aid kit that's obviously the most important thing some bright colored flags or flares something that uh, if you do slide off and you go into a big snow bank and the drifting that comes over the top of you that way you can mark something you can be seen a little as bit as the snow plow puts like snow over your car well, there you go there, there's there's a lot of stories from like places out on highway 24 out uh, through Kamaima area where cars disappear into snow banks yeah and, and yep. our snow plows yep. disappear into snow banks out on that kind of road yeah. so uh it's it's not just other people it's us too yeah, Nathan, we're out of time. thank Nathan, you so thanks. much Appreciate always it. informative absolutely no problem, guys thank you and uh, it's time now for the huckabee report and you can hear the Huckabee Report each weekday at this time, brought to you exclusively by Waddell and Reed. Laura Nelson, Josh Funk, and Steve Stanger are the financial advisors, and the number is 736-6563. I was going to mention this. Our cable is off. Oh, did you just notice? I didn't remember turning off Nathan, the TV. Nathan, when was the last time you saw the TV on? Oh, uh, I, it was just before the last uh, Showcase Showdown. Yeah. Showcase yeah. showdown. <laughs> no, our uh, our cable our cable is out here. So then every Kelly's time, totally distracted. Every time somebody uh, spits in the in the barrel pit, it seems like our cable goes out. Who so was our cable know. guy that came that one day? Was it Jim? Tim, wasn't it? Tim, wasn't it Tim? Tim, yeah. come on over. Yeah, we he got... installed it on air. It was really nice. I don't know. Nobody's complained <laughs> that our internet is not working, so no, maybe it's, it's still, still working. It seems it's to be working. Yeah. But at any rate, hey. We digress. Uh, Today's yeah. our lunch. I know. Today is our lunch. We'll talk about that in a second, but I need to tell you about Clearwater Power Equipment. Yes. Because uh, they've got chainsaws. Uh, Husqvarna and Echo Chainsaws, and you might think 
Uh, my goodness, I'm quite slow in getting my winter supply of firewood now. So you're stuck. Here you are. It's 38 degrees. So the snow is going to be melting. You're getting a reprieve. Stop by Clearwater Power Equipment at 252 Washington Street, 734-7767. Uh, this is your last chance. Say, hey, I need a chainsaw to go ahead and get my winter firewood. I need a chainsaw. My husband's yeah. driving me crazy. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and that's a short drive. It's a very short yeah. drive. So uh, you can still get a leaf blower if you want. They got those too. But our leaf raking days might be over for a while. But chainsaw, this is chainsaw weather. Ooh. Yeah, and they've got them at uh, Clearwater Power Equipment. Stop by and tell them that uh, Kelly and Jill told you to stop by. Okay, so today's our lunch. So Nathan, is the, is the limo going to have trouble driving on the roads? Well, are uh, we going to make it from here I, to the station or, it, or to Canyon Crest? As warm as getting out there, the roadway should be clearing up pretty well. Uh, the, the ice should be melting down quite a bit, especially if they're getting a lot of traffic. Between here and there, you should be okay. The Blue Lakes is probably good and clear. So I do you, have an update on I-84, however. Oh, yeah. good, good. The, uh, the roadway is now open uh, back up to traffic through uh, milepost 201 where that crash happened. Oh, cool. Okay, good. So people can now drive the interstate. So, Nathan, Without. have you signed All up right, to win lunch with Kelly and Jill? Because this will be the last time people yeah. will ha- be able to have lunch with Kelly. That'll be a priority. That will as soon be as I a get priority. home, I'll get right back on the internet. All right, and sounds good. Newsradio1310.com. Right, Enter everything you can. <laughs> Today we're going to have lunch with Frank and Jim Vensmeen. And yep. so, um, I'm looking forward to it because I'm getting hungry. Are you? Yes, I am. Oh I'm going to go to my desk and I'm going to decide what I want to eat today so I won't have to waste time looking at the menu. Yeah, you've had almost everything. <laughs> I so, have. It's all been good. I have to start over again. <laughs> all right. Hey, uh, have a great weekend and be careful out be there. Be safe out there. Yep. And we'll be back Monday. See you, Jill. Bye, Cal.